the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. And coming up in the news at noon, we are only one day away from the midterm elections. We take a look at what is happening across the country and right here in the DMV. Shots fired on school grounds. What we know about the incident at a Virginia elementary school that left one in the hospital. And good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall and happening right now, we could actually tie a record or maybe even set a record that goes all the way back to 1975 in Washington, D.C. with temperatures unseasonably warm. Meteorologist Damon Matson joins us with the latest check on the forecast. Damon, how long will this warm weather last and are we going to break a record? Yeah, Mark, it certainly looks like we have a very good chance to do that here today. We got close this weekend when temperatures were just short of 80 degrees, but just how warm do we need to get to break that record today? And when will it start cooling off? We'll let you know in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. New at noon, the students are back in the classroom today after shots were fired right outside of an elementary school in Herndon, Virginia, yesterday. DC News Now's Joseph Omo reports on the latest in the investigation. All right, well, let's just start off with the good news. Nobody got hurt. You see, the shooting happened yesterday. It's Sunday. No classes on a Sunday. All students are okay. But today we learned it didn't happen at the school. It actually happened on this field right next to the school. I don't know what's going on, but this is bad. Fairfax County Police say at around 4 yesterday afternoon, they got a call about gunshots ringing out right by Hutchison Elementary School. They come here and find a group of men behind the school. One of them, when they see officers, starts to run. Now on this map, you can see just how close the elementary school is to the busy Dulles toll road. That man who police believe is the shooter ran through those woods and onto the highway. Once that man got onto the Dulles toll road, he was struck by a vehicle. That vehicle remained on scene and the patient was listed in critical condition. He was ground transported to a local hospital where he's being treated for injuries that are still considered life threatening. Police say while combing through the woods, they found a gun that looks like it could be the suspects. Today we caught up with Chelsea Throckmorton. Her kids go to the school. They also play soccer on the field where the shooting happened. It's a bit intense. I mean, we went to drop our baby off at daycare and saw like news at the school. And so, of course, our older kids are like, oh, the news is there. I'm like, but it's not for a good reason, though. Like, it's that's scary to think about, you know, and I just I don't get the point of shooting a gun off into the air like guns are for protection, not for fun. So turns out there are concerns about the adult soccer league that plays on that same grass field. The Herndon Youth Soccer League sent this statement to parents after the shooting. We have been in contact with the Fairfax County Park Authority regularly throughout the fall season to address the concerns brought on by the adult league that plays Sundays on the grass field. The county had placed security at the fields, but the issues continued to occur. For the last several weeks, we have pressured the county, specifically asking them to revoke the permit of the adult league on Sundays at Hutchison. And back here at Hutchison Elementary, business as usual this morning. We saw a bunch of kids hop off of the school bus. No indication whatsoever of any increased security presence on the school grounds. Reporting in Herndon, Virginia, I'm Joseph Olmo, DC News Now. Thank you, Joseph. Happening today, the Magruder High School student who has been charged for shooting another student at school will be in court. Stephen Alston is a plea hearing today. It's being tried as he's being tried as an adult and is scheduled for 1.30 this afternoon. DC News Now will be in court and we will continue to follow the story. Now for the latest, you can always head to our website at dcnewsnow.com. We are your local election headquarters as candidates hit the ground for last minute votes. President Biden also pushing to get people to the polls. He's expected to make one last stop campaign for Maryland gubernatorial candidate Wes Moore. The event will take place in Bowie State University. Now, with uh, tomorrow being Election Day, there's a lot to get to. Early voting in the district is officially over, and history will be made if Mayor Muriel Bowser is reelected to a third term. She would be the second longest serving mayor behind Marion Barry, who served four terms. One race to watch for is two at large seats in D.C. Council. One thing on all D.C. ballots, Initiative 82, which if passed, would require mandatory base wage paid by employers to increase until 2027 when it matches the district's $16.10 per hour minimum wage. There's never been a more important election. Um, there's just there's so many things in our country that are um, 
going in a direction that I don't like. And um, I always vote, but I felt compelled this election more than any other. Well, Tuesday's election day and polls will be open in D.C. from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Now to Prince George's County, where election officials say they're dealing with a new challenge. There are several questions on the ballot which may cause delays at the polls. Our reporter, Yamarie Sesse, takes a closer look at those issues. Prince George's County election officials say voting on election day may take a little longer as you read through some of the questions on your ballot. The ballot is four pages. And that's something that um, we historically have never had to deal with before. And they want everyone to be patient and read carefully. We do encourage voters to re read the questions ahead of time so that they know how they're going to vote prior to going to the polls. So what's on the ballot in the county? Questions A through E are focused on bond issues to improve community college facilities, county buildings, libraries, and more. Other questions you'll see involve charter amendments. Question F will focus on a review board to make recommendations on the amount of compensation the county executive and the county council members will receive. With question G, the charter committee noticed more than 90 instances of gender-specific language in the charter. Now they're looking to change that and make it gender neutral. And question I will require that requests for proposals in the county contract biddings be made public in the newspaper. And the final one, question J, that will require all county council members to be a registered voter in their district for one year before an election season, unless there is a zoning change. And as a reminder, long lines are expected on election day. We expect a very high turnout, um, and we are, in fact, prepared for it. Now the Board of Elections is reminding everyone to ensure that you drop off your mail-in ballot in these drop boxes or have it marked by the post office on November 8th. For now, reporting in Prince George's County, Maryland, I'm Yamarie Sasse, D.C. News Now. Our thanks to Yamarie. D.C. News Now has you covered tomorrow on Election Day and in the days to come as we find out election results and what they mean for you here in the DMV. Well, across the country, candidates aren't wasting any time and energizing their bases. Both parties spent the weekend making their final pitches to voters. Anna Wernicke tells us what we can expect less than 24 hours away from polls opening. I do think we will win both. RNC Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel said on CNN's State of the Union that she's confident Republicans will take back control of Congress on Tuesday. I think we'll take back the House and the Senate. We are in the hunt to win. Florida Republican Senator Rick Scott says voters see Tuesday's election as a referendum on the Biden administration. This election is about the Biden agenda. People don't like high inflation, high crime, open borders, fentanyl. That's what we're talking about. But New New York Democratic Congressman Sean Maloney says while the race may be close, Democrats still have a fighting chance. Because our candidates have real plans, uh, they're going to do better than people think on Tuesday night. He says Democrats have a proven track record of delivering bills that help Americans. And the White House warning democracy is at stake if Republicans prevail. If we want voting rights finally passed in Congress, mm -hmm. we need Democrats in Congress. If we don't want a national ban on abortion and for doctors and health care providers to be sent to prison for offering an abortion to a woman whose life may be in danger, then we need Democrats in Congress. And that was Anna Wernicke reporting. Vice President Kamala Harris scheduled to speak at an event for California Democrats in Los Angeles. Republican officials and candidates are pushing to disqualify thousands of ballots in three key battleground states. In Pennsylvania, the Supreme Court agreed with the Republican National Committee to not count ballots where the voter forgot to put the date on the envelope, even if they come in before Election Day. In Wisconsin, Republicans want a court ruling that will keep officials from counting votes when the witness addressed is not included. And in Michigan, the Republican nominee for Secretary of State sued the top election official in Detroit to throw out absentee ballots that were completed without an ID. Illegal battles of eligibility of ballots are expected to cause delays in many midterm elections. North Korea's ballistic missile tests last week were practices to, quote, mercilessly strike South Korean and American targets, North Korea's military said. And they say that the barrage of missiles is their response to extensive military exercises by the U.S. and South Korea. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has condemned the missile launches as responsible.
Well, it was already record-breaking jackpot. Well, now it's even bigger after win no winners in Saturday's drawing. The Powerball lottery has now reached $1.9 billion, and that brings the lump sum payout to more than $900 million bucks. The next drawing tonight, but the odds of picking the winning ticket are a slim one in 292 million.